Happy Halloween, mortals! <laughs> In this episode, I've taken over for the Gentleman Wake to bring you my review of the only deck that bears my mark. The Triple Six by Riffle Shuffle Playing Cards. Stay tuned to the end of this episode for a chance to win a set of these beautiful cards directly from me. And remember, for the most devilishly detailed content for playing cards enthusiasts, like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Okay, so it's actually me, the Gentleman Awake, in case you couldn't tell. This time of year is always really fun, getting to dress up as ghouls and ghosts and demons, puts the focus squarely on the dark side. Horror films and haunted houses are great for a fright, but perhaps nothing puts the fear of God into a man more than the devil. He's gone by many names, of course, Satan, Mephistopheles, Lucifer, the Prince of Darkness, the Serpent, Beelzebub, and as referenced in the book of Revelations chapter 13, the Beast. Rather than concern ourselves with some of the more somber devilish histories, this episode will aim to keep it light even, even as, as we, we plunge into the dark. dark. This is the 666 deck by Riffle Shuffle Playing Cards, a Kickstarter campaign organized by Kevin Yu that will see the deck available in two variants, one crimson red and the other one cobalt blue. The decks come packaged in gorgeous foil embossed tuck cases with mysterious black foil ink on premium black matte cardstock. On the front of the tuck, underneath the prominent triple sixes in a shower of fire and flames is a banner with the words playing cards. Two pitchforks crossed at the handle flank a circle with an upside down five pointed star or pentagram drawn within. Under Underneath is a small placard with the year of the deck's printing, 2019 in Roman numerals. Each corner features more occult symbology, including a crescent moon, the sigil of Lucifer, and the Leviathan's cross, otherwise known as Satan's cross. I went to Catholic school as a boy, and I remember being absolutely equal parts terrified and intrigued by the Bible's book of Revelations. The end times depiction of the beast with seven heads and ten horns and the infamous mark on his head, 666, was a nightmare I hope that I never got to actually see. It's enough to scare you down these straight and narrow. The truth is that number, which by now has become pretty well known for its negative connotations, enough to be the focus of some Hollywood feature films like The Omen and End of Days, has actually been under debate by biblical scholars with a few translations and interpretations pointing to 616 instead of the devil's number. Regardless, the association to the mythical dark arts is really what Riffle Shuffle and designers PNKMGC, read as punk magic, is going for here. I really don't think this deck is to be interpreted as any kind of theistic stance or as a symbol of any overt belief system. To me, it's more likely the deck is taking aim at embodying the occult and its cool forbidden symbols in the way that might be attractive to anyone who shares an interest in magic, real or imagined, regardless of religious affiliation or proclivity. Regardless of what the imagery means, the artwork is meant to look cool. Some folks might be a little apprehensive regarding owning or appreciating a deck like this given the subject matter. but. In reality, doing so offers no further judgment about the beholder any more than, say, owning a deck centered around Greek mythology does about substantiating beliefs in ancient Greek gods. The sides of the box keep the imagery going with a coiled serpent wrapped around a fiery column. One side has a bowl of fire and announces the deck as a first edition and premium quality, and the other side replaces the bowl with a horned skull and reiterates the producer name. The top of the box features a couple of kneeling skeletons bathed in fire holding more pitchforks. The top flap is held in place by a silver stamp style seal with red details. A couple of winged skeletons flank the image of a hand holding three playing cards, all sixes. Underneath the limited edition numbering out of 2500 is listed. 
The bottom of the box has the Riffle Shuffle logo and includes some additional ad copy including the designer's name, year of production, and that the deck was printed in the EU by Cardamundi. More on that a bit later. The back of the box is a one-to-one -one black -on black representation of the card backs as we'll soon see. Opening the box reveals the inner lining is also detailed with black foil flames and another iteration of the number of the beast. Regardless of anyone's spiritual or religious beliefs, skeletons and fire look cool and badass. Designers Punk Magic as seen on their Instagram have a unique style that lends itself well to this kind of artwork. The card backs are a really interesting two-way design that harkens back to the traditional double circle style card backs that are popular among playing card producers. The central figures here are two mirrored circles wreathed in fire featuring the horned goat head of Baphomet, complete with a pentagram symbol on the goat's forehead which echoes the composition of the goat's head itself. The first recorded mention of the Baphomet is from the trial records for the Knights Templar, famous for their white tunics with large red crosses, who were accused and tried successfully of heresy and treason by the King of France in the 1200s, which subsequently led to the destruction of the entire order. Now, the Knights Templar story is really cool, by the way, but for another time. However, the image of the goat-headed hermaphrodite wasn't associated with the name Baphomet until much later in the mid-19th century. The Sabbatic goat is attributed to a man named Eliphas Levi, who actually designed the imagery to represent the balanced sides of the universe, both man and woman, good and evil. Eventually, it grew to be associated with various mystical and occult traditions. Flanking at either side of the Baphomet are two horned and tailed skeletons with arms outstretched holding a small circle with the Leviathan's cross in it. Near the feet of the skeletons are two rings of what appears to be shackles. The cards don't have a traditional poker border per se, instead letting the lines of the illustration produce the edges. These are completely custom cards. Pips and indices are unique, if a bit smaller than standard. The pips have some overprint debris flex printed onto them, which is a nice grungy touch. The Ace of Spades features a large prominent spade pip with two snakes coiled around a devil's pitchfork in the middle. The court cards are a really cool and macabre collection of skeletons robed in the finest royal vestments. The artwork is clear and thought provoking and well suited to the theme. Each one is full of details that emerge on deeper examination. Some of my favorites include the Jack of Diamonds holding the Scales of Judgment, the Mohawk Warrior Jack of Hearts, the Eve-like Queen of Hearts holding the Serpent Aloft, the Grim Reaper Jack of Spades and the Queen of Hearts holding a poison vial. Interestingly, all the queens have tattooed bodies. The Queen of Spades has a jet black raven perched on her hand that bears a striking resemblance to the one on the logo for magician Daniel Madison, an homage perhaps. The court cards are pretty awesome and they remind me of the kinds of eerie creatures you'd expect to find in an RPG game. In fact, while on the subject of role playing and devils, I'm actually old enough to remember how crazy the media uproar was during the 80s regarding the so-called satanic practices of role playing games like Dungeons and Dragons. Some of that stuff was briefly hinted at at the very first season of Netflix's Stranger Things, which of course takes place in the 80s. And then there was the craziness surrounding playing popular music backwards to discover satanic messages. Bands like Led Zeppelin, The Eagles, and even The Beatles were accused of embedding secret subliminal messages into their songs for the unassuming public to hear. Anyway. The decks also include a double backer, good for magic, a riffle shuffle ad card, and two identical jokers featuring a smiling skeleton jester in a field of fire. The decks are printed by Cardamundi on their proprietary B9 True Linen finish, one of the final decks to come out of the Belgian card producing giant with this particular stock and finish combination, as they aim to move towards thinner stocks. It's actually a real shame because these decks handle amazingly. They are some of my favorite handling cards in recent memory and it makes me glad to know that the parlor will be printed on this exact or very similar stock. In the end these are wonderfully thematic decks well suited for delving into magic or some spooky gameplay and of course 
perfect for collectors. The Kickstarter campaign for the 666 playing cards is still ongoing, but it's about to end literally November 1st right away. The project is already well funded, however, with almost 1000% funding achieved. So much for folks shying away from darker themes. I should mention that there are some additional additions, including a dark foil reserve edition that will be offered as a stretch goal. It looks great and will include Cardamundi's gold cold foil on the card backs. Those actually might be my favorite. Special thanks to Kevin Yu and Riffle Shuffle for not only sending me these decks to review, but also to give away. See, I'm giving away a set, one red, one blue, to one lucky winner, and here's what you have to do to enter. One, like this video. Two, be a subscriber to this channel. And three, well, as I'm occasionally want to do, I've hidden a code phrase somewhere in this video. Do as it says for a chance to win. Congrats to the four people whose names appear on the screen. You each win a deck of Ekaterina's Fox playing cards. Contact me via Instagram to claim your prize. Thank you to my patrons as always, and thanks to you for watching. To see another video that perfectly fits the Halloween theme with a horror parody of The Ring and features an appearance by the gorgeous Lady Wake, click on the video that will appear right here. I've been the Gentleman of Darkness. Hope to see you again next time. <laughs>